Welcome to this episode number 59 of your next trade called today Momentum Fading. So there is the question after a really strong rally since the start of November where the market is up 25% overall that momentum might be fading. So the names that have been driving the market, we are talking the Fabulous 7, the semiconductors, the NVIDIA of this world in the US or the granulas in Europe. So that means very few names have been driving this market. If we look at the top chart, which is this one, you'll see that the, the momentum in white since 2019 has been underperforming the S&P. So the S&P has been extremely strong based on those five to seven names, which are explaining 40 to 50 plus percent of the performance. But more recently, since the over the last 12 months and more importantly, since the start of the year momentum. So here I'm taking the example through an ETF, uh, which has roughly 10 billion asset under management. You can see the outperformance of this um, momentum, which is this factor strategy versus the overall market. We are talking a 10 percent outperformance. Now there is a question, you know, are we are we going to see a fading a top in this momentum? As we are looking at the next catalyst, as always, uh, that's something we're going to be discussing today. So wait for the end of, of this uh, video because uh, there's going to be an interesting talk about, about this momentum. So what about the year to date assets performance? The picture is still the same. We are up roughly 7% for the uh, equity market in the in the US, I'm talking S&P and NASDAQ, Russell is flat on the year, uh, but actually Euro stocks, uh, so Europe and uh, Japan have been outperforming the US if you take the um, just the, the local currencies, but if you adjust from uh, in US dollar, you will see that the performance over the last 12 months for those three markets is more or less the same. Uh, if you look at China, uh, up, uh, slightly uh, they have been trying as much as possible to be buying like the Japanese style buying some ETF so that's really something that you should keep, be keeping an eye because if we believe that you know China might be uh, following the path of Japan there is a good chance that the Chinese market will go higher um, what about uh, currencies so currencies DXY up 2% so uh, US dollar um, 2% for the year Current uh, crypto, still the same picture, up 60%. And we're going to be interested into the commodities. More importantly, going into the next page. And this is the one uh, we're going to be uh, looking at WTI. So WTI is now trading above 80. And copper, uh, when we're going to be looking at TA, a big move for the week. So this is important uh, because these those commodities have been pretty flattish over the last few months. That's going to have repercussion uh, for inflation going forward but more importantly for ID generation we start to see some breakouts in materials um, in some uh, steel names and uh, those are the names that you should be uh, looking at these days because the cyclicals are starting to do pretty well on the week S&P uh, flat for the week small down and uh, Russell uh, uh, down two percent. So I'm interested into the um, so the year-to-date industry performance is still the same. Uh, where uh, we're gonna have very few winners here that are outperforming the S&P, and actually you see a big uh, big chunk of uh, underperformance. So this is why we're interesting interested in knowing if momentum is no fading, uh, if the market could be turning a bit or actually there is rotation that if there could be rotation in the market. For the week, S&P flattish, uh, many losers, very few winners, uh, but the winners, this is really interesting because we're going to have XLE, we're going to have uh, materials. So really the cyclicals, um, the one that have been struggling more recently and we start to see uh, some light. So is it rotation due to uh, the OPEX or very much uh, when the options are expiry, there is a bit of rotation in the flows. Uh, that explains a bit why we see for the week semiconductors that were down 3%. So going into the sector sector's performance for the week, real estate very weak. One of the reasons is obviously um, 
bonds yields that been on the way up uh, due to the, the inflation that been on the rise, CPI and PPI that were above expectations. Energy, big winners, as, big winner as I said, and material. So really the two outstanding uh, stories of this week have been energy and materials. What about the rates? Rates, now we got 4.3%. Um, that's, you know, we talk about the 4.2 level. I don't like to do tech, any technical analysis on um, on the 10 years or the two years or any bonds or uh, any yields. But, you know, yields have been on the way up more recently. Why? Because, as I said, we have a second wave of inflation. So uh, that explains as well now why the expectations from the Fed uh, versus last, last week. If we look at the last, everything has been up. So we are expecting the Fed to be less accommodative. So if you take, for example, uh, July, we were, as of last week, for the expectation at 5.10 for the, for the, the FOMC, and now we're at 5.17. So everything has been going up. We are expecting less cuts for the year. Um, and Obviously, we are expecting, you know, the FOMC meeting on Tuesday and Wednesday uh, to be uh, less dovish than what we thought a couple of months ago. What about inflation? Uh, no, sorry, not inflation. That will be the volatility here. So we're looking at the VIX. So the 30 days implied volatility of the S&P 500. So as of yesterday, we are at 14.4%. If you do a bit more granular chart of the VIX, you will see that each time the VIX is going above 50, 15%, VIX is smashed and stocks are bouncing. So for the time being, so far, 15% has been the, the threshold for uh, uh, the volatility to get smashed. It's hard for the time being for the volatility to, to, to go much higher. Um, so you, honestly, you could be looking at any single day uh, over the last two to, to three weeks. Each time volatility goes above 15%, the VIX goes above 15, and then you get a sell of volatility and stocks going higher. So I'm interested now in going into the, the charts, looking at technical analysis. So looking at the S&P um, futures uh, on a weekly basis, as you can see, you know, we had from the lows in October here, a lot of um, green candles. More recently, you know, today, or should I say this week, we had this uh, a red uh, candle, OPEX week is always a bit a bit difficult to, to read, but what you can see from this this chart is there is a bit more indecision and the momentum is a bit fading. It's even more true if you look at the Nasdaq. You know, Nasdaq is done on the week. Uh, we are back to the level, uh, so we close at the level that we had three or four weeks ago. Russell never managed to go above the 2100, so that's the level to, to watch for. Meta, Amazon, uh, same, similar, you see uh, the highs and the lows that are pretty wide, but we are closing at the same level, uh, both this week and the week before. So indecision. Looking at commodities, uh, um, um, I think WTI, as long as we stay uh, below this 83, 84 level, uh, this is still the same story, but copper has been making uh, new highs. One of the reasons is China has been cutting production. So, you know, Commodities depend uh, normally on paper about supply and demand. When China says, you know, we're going to be reducing uh, production, which has been helping uh, a lot of names like FCX in, in the US, which have been pretty strong, uh, suddenly uh, you get the, uh, the copper going higher. Gold consolidating after this massive move that we had the week before. For the currencies, euro dollar, kind of the same picture. We are trading around 108, 109. But I'm interested into the dollar yen. Why? Because on Tuesday, we should have normally uh, the decision from the Bank of Japan. It's very much like the end of negative yields. Um, as always, with the Bank of Japan, uh, you should expect the unexpected. Uh, so be ready for that. Uh, but clearly, this is one of the of the currencies that could be moving into this week. 
What about this SOX, which is the momentum trade? Okay, so what is it? It's the Philadelphia Semiconductor uh, that has been really strong. If you look at this year, so we started the year uh, roughly, uh, so that would be here, uh, around 3,800. Now we are at 4,700. So we are talking 25% one-way traffic. But as you can see recently, we made some highs and we have been coming down quite a lot from the highs. Really, we are down 7, 8%. That's, that's not nothing. Um, so the momentum trade uh, is a bit fading. And for us um, as investors, we need to be looking at the next catalyst. What's going to be the next driver? So there is a start of a rotation in the market. Um, for the time being, if you look at Europe through the DAX, through the stock 600, uh, all the candles are pretty green um, and uh, the names uh, that are driven the market, we are talking the granulas, we are talking very few names, we are talking Siemens, we are talking SAP for Germany, we are talking Schneider uh, for, for France, for example, really, really strong any single day. Um, and as long as you don't see change, you know, don't fight this momentum because it's it's a one way traffic. So let's go back into what happened for the for this week. So on, on the week, looking at the S&P, so the S&P, after all, we ended up flat, but uh, in between, we went higher. So the end of the week was, was pretty negative for some reasons. Obviously, we had the CPI, uh, which was higher. The market reacted okay on its thinking. Actually, the shelter inflation year on year is, going, is getting better. But as you can see, the core CPI more recently months on months has been up. So question markers, do, are we going to have a second wave of inflation? Normally, if you look at inflation, you could have two to three waves. Uh, so in, in other words, now the market, and we've saw that with the FOMC expectations through the Fed fund rates, we saw that with the US 10 years, uh, as inflation is, is going up again, uh, yields have been on the way up. Uh, so the market is a kind of slow to digest this information. Uh, good news is good news, bad news is bad news. And at the end of the week, you know, due to first uh, the PPI, which has above um, and retail sales, both the revised and the, uh, the numbers for February were not that great. Uh, we had a bit of a uh, sell off. That would be a big word because we were only we are only one percent from 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 the eyes, but um, less of a momentum and a bit of turning in, in the overall market. I'm interested into as well what happened. So we had the OPEX yesterday, the option expiry, and we had the index rebalancing. And one of the headlines was obviously SMCI, which um, was. Um, uh, which entered the S&P 500 as a new constituent. Um, and since the announcement, which was made on Friday two, two weeks ago, so the stock is more or less flat, similar. So the, the, the stock closed yesterday on Friday at the same level that it opened on Monday after the announcement. Uh, but in between, we had roughly 6.8 million shares uh, that traded at 1100 something. So the V, what we call the VWAP, which is what a, roughly where the stocks has been trading over the last couple of weeks, is four to five percent above uh, the, the the last as of yesterday. So this is this is always important to look at uh, how, where the market has been trading over a certain period of time. Obviously, this one is pretty obvious since the announcement to the introduction into the S&P. We should be keeping an eye into those names. Why? Because going into the catalyst for this week, one of the biggest things to be looking at will be on Monday. So that will be 3.30 uh, p.m. UK time. Uh, we get the NVDA analyst meeting. Obviously, in terms of momentum, you can't be looking at more than NVDA. Everyone is looking at this name. So there are supposed, there are some rumors that they will be uh, launching new products. You know, there's always a bit of noise, a bit of noise, a lot of noise around NVIDIA. So I'm interested into this as the momentum play, you know, are we going to keep on going with NVIDIA stories? If you compare NVIDIA with what are the open interests going into next Friday? So here I'm looking at the options. As you can see, it's pretty well split between put uh, in red and in blue, uh, the calls. Why? There is more indecision. It's not like the army of uh, calls have been pretty active over the last week or so. So 
This is one of the catalysts for this week. Another one is, as I said, the Bank of Japan red decision. So that will be on Tuesday night, um, on Tuesday morning, if you are so in, in, in the UK. Um, then we got the, going to have the Fed decision, FOMC red decision. Uh, so as always, the FOMC is going to tell you two things, that they are dependent, so based on their mandate. Over the last few months, you can agree or maybe disagree of them being uh, independent because it's pretty clear that uh, they have a bit of a political agenda. And then secondly, that they are data dependent. Uh, so they will be talking about inflation. If you look at the most recent data, inflation, as I said, has been on the way up. So I want to link this FOMC red decision with the S&P 500 performance more recently on FOMC day. So as you can see, the last um, meeting was pretty negative. So we had kind of uh, inflation coming uh, coming back again um, and, and, and um, the Fed power backtracked a bit. So that will be for for Wednesday, on Thursday, we get the flash PMIs for the leading indicator, and I want to flag as well. So we only, we not only have gonna have Nvidia uh, coming with a, a conference, an analyst meeting on Monday, but we get some interesting names. We get uh, MU Micron. We're gonna have some other names like Lululemon, Nike, uh, FedEx uh, that are gonna come with the earnings. Now, so those are the names to be watching. So. Bank of Japan red decision, FOMC red decision, NVIDIA analyst meeting, and as well the flash PMIs. What are the expectations for the moves? It's plus minus 1.5% for the S&P, which is roughly what we have for this week. So this is it for me today. As always, video series, mentoring, uh, so that is both video series, we're going to have access to 30 plus, you know, videos, 50 Excel spreadsheet, mentoring our one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, there are uh, recently several people that, you know, asked to do mentoring quite quickly. So if you are thinking about doing uh, mentoring before this summer, you should be contacting me quite quickly and send me an email to greg at dupontrading.com. Otherwise, there is a free community which is on Discord. Uh, it's growing. We got more and more uh, uh, helpful traders and, and people that have been trading uh, on a daily basis. So this is it for me for, for this week. Have a good trading week and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.